Now, speaking about women, let's look at women in the blogosphere. Linda Ikeji is definitely a name that we cannot overlook. When we talk about blogging in Nigeria, she's one of the four names that come to mind. Now, Linda got into trouble recently because she made an erroneous post about an alleged owner of Instablog. After being threatened by lawyers of a punch online editor alleged to be the owner of Instablog, Linda Ikeji tendered an apology over the report. She says, and I quote, in the initial post, which she put on the 15th of November, she said, mm -hmm. meet the owner of Instablog Niger, John Abayomi. Now, she published this on the 15th of November, 2018. John Abayomi was mistakenly identified by his picture as the owner of Instablog. Now, this mis mistake was as a result of the exact similarities in the names of John Abayomi, who is an online editor with Punch, and another John Abayomi Aru Leba, who is the actual owner of Instablog Niger. Now, we have a problem on our hands, Esther. We, blogging is a thing. Back in the day, you'd probably wait for the newspapers to break the news. But these days, before the newspapers get the news stories, the blogs already broke them. And in a bid to be the first to break the story, to, to, be, to have exclusives to these stories, we find that we're having a lot of issues of people giving out wrong information. So where, what is the role of fact-checking when we look at things like this? And you know, how really can we regulate the blogosphere, if, it, if I may call it that? Um, there are a lot of things that will come into place. And that's one of those, um, this is one of those times when I would wish that everybody in the world, in the country, would understand that law exists. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm a lawyer, you're a lawyer, or trying to be all legal and all of that. But the thing is, you don't just go out and throw out information without actually investigating to make sure that what you are saying is what it is. Sorry to say this, this is not the first time Linda is making a mistake like this. Maybe not in so much a similar situation as this one, but there have been times when she has laid out information and said, oh, this is happening, this is happening. You know, I remember the, I think it was the lady who got sick, Maya Wa or so, there was an issue like that. She laid out information that in a way misled a lot of people. And then at the end of the day, she still had to come out to say she was sorry. You know, like it wasn't supposed to be like that. So why don't you just make sure that you have facts right before you just let out? But then again, some people will bring up the argument that that is why they are blogs that blogs basically have, you know, their, their job sometimes is to gossip. So some people will tell you, at the end of the day, it's not that deep. It's a blog. Blogs gossip. And if you're in the public eye, you shouldn't take it so personal. Now, in the particular case, the John Abayomi, who was involved in this, there are several areas or several factors you can look at. First of all, he already has a job. He paid employment. His contract already has rules and regulations stipulating maybe to the, uh, the fact that he can't have another job whilst having a full-time job here. So basically, what you're trying to make that look is... You're making him look inefficient. You're making him look like he's using the time for his work at Punch to be doing his own private hustle that is paying him way more because I know Instablog is making a lot of money, way more than Punch has, is, or maybe will ever pay him. So at the end of the day, you're jeopardizing not just his reputation. We already know that Instablog has a reputation. People want to, everybody wants to know who the face behind Instablog is because they have like all the latest gist and all the latest tea on everybody, but nobody knows. And I think that even the person's, saving grace, the fact that it's anonymous, because I feel like if people knew who exactly ran that page, the person would have been in trouble by now for all the kind of information. But do you think that, you know, we need this kind of, we need um, bloggers like this, bloggers who keep people on their toes, bloggers, for example, like Instablog Niger, who are basically the first to spill the tea, or, or would you say that the elite, they go too far sometimes, that, you know, they push, they push the Okay, I'm, I'm not going to say I have a problem with you being the first to release or break the news. It's great. Be the, you know, at the top of your game at all times. But make sure your facts are correct. Make sure what you tell us as the people, those who would take this information, is what it is. And besides, Instablog ha always has very... Legitimate. <sighs> Aside that, there are headlines. God. Whoever it's, is behind it's that... It's a lot of times not born again. Whoever is behind that account, you know, sometimes... <gasps> I want to say the person deserves some accolades because <laughs> I believe the person is so witty, the way they caption it and the way they phrase it. Yeah, and it's one of the blogs that people pray not to get on top, not <laughs> to get on, because it's as if a lot of the followers are just angry. So they put out this information and about the person, then they will go there and they will finish they, your life. Like they just they tear you to shreds like this. In one minute and you're seeing 500 comments and like, yo, 
when did this person put up this post that you're having 500 comments? So and we understand that these blogs, they make it interesting. We have several other blogs like this outside the country. We have the likes of The Shade Room, sites like TMZ that give you all, they give you the tea. But at the end of the day, sometimes we need to ask ourselves, when it comes to blogging, how far is too far? It's important to give out this information when it's not yourself or it's not your family member. Wait until a family member has important information that could jeopardize them and see if you would give it out. Classic case in point, Linda Ikeji. When um, Poede had given birth, um, was it Linda that, I'm not quite sure if it was Linda or Instablog that put this out, but when Poede, a beauty queen, had given birth, they said, I think four or five months after marriage, so, 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 and so had her baby. So basically wanting all of us to know that she, she, had, was, she was pregnant, pregnant before she got married. The was happening. And then Sandra was pregnant, or what's her name, um, Linda's sister? the Laura. Laura, exactly. Laura was already pregnant as well when she got married. And people kept saying, oh, Auntie Linda, if it's somebody else that, is, that was pregnant before marriage, you'll be the first to announce it. Now, this is not criticizing or attacking anybody who wants to get pregnant before marriage. It's your life, whatever you want to do. do. But at the end of the day, you, that would show you, that would make you realize that there is actually, a, they, they put a limit when it comes to blogging. When it's information about other people, it's easy to give out. But when it's about yourself or your loved ones, you want to protect it, we can. I'm sorry, I don't want to be petty, but I'm just going to say I love Nigerians for being who they are. Because I think we can remember when uh, Dan Linda finally got pregnant. We know how the whole country took it and how everybody said what they said. Even when she made all the viable defenses she had. Even though I was not among the people that were attacking her for that. Because I said at the end of the day, even if Linda says one thing, is she your God? Don't you have a mind of your own to do what you want to do? So I, ne I can't remember Linda ever preaching a message of celibacy. But that's her business if she did. I honestly can't remember. The only thing I knew was she was empowering a lot of young oh, girls. she did. Not to, not to, to be self-sufficient, you know, to be able to use their talent. I honestly can't say she did preach a message of celibacy she or did. she didn't. But it's not my business. But at the end of the day, bloggers need to be able to handle the tea when it's served to them. Because when you are fishing out the tea and handing out oh, the tea on yes. other people, you should know that what goes around comes around. So as you're giving out the dish on other people, be ready. Because this dish that you're serving out, or this tea you're serving out, will come back to you in good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. But thank you for giving us all the tea that you give us from time to time. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.